Hi, Nancy Howell here. I'm with the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society and I've got a really, really interesting report. We just had our Christmas bird count for 2016. It was at the end of December, December 30th. And our report, uh, when it, everything tallied in, we did a fabulous job. Uh, so many people were out. We had 57 participants. And when people reported back, they were saying, oh, we didn't do so well this year, we didn't do so well this year. Well, when all the reports came back from our count circle, we wound up having 80 species of birds seen on Christmas count day, which was Friday, uh, December 30th. We also had four species during count week, which are the three days before the count or the three days after. So I'd like to do a, just a little highlight of our Christmas bird count for 2016 and why it's important to do this type of research. And it is research. It is citizen science. It is people going out, gathering data. It is a snapshot, uh, but still there's data and there's over a hundred years worth of data uh, through the National Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology where this data is being uh, kept. So I just want to do, a, again, a real quick review of some of the species we've had and some surprises as well, too. Oh, first, I do want to thank everybody, those 57 participants who either went out uh, in the field, birded by car, maybe they watched uh, birds at their feeder in the count circle, or even went out owling early in the morning. So we had a fabulous time. So again, 80 species. Who would have thought? Um, we did start off uh, with, we do start off with the waterfowl, um, and we're looking at Lake Erie in the background here. Our waterfowl numbers were fabulous. We don't get a lot of geese, uh, species of geese and, and puddle ducks, or the uh, dabbling ducks, but we had some nice ones. Um, wood ducks were seen, as well as a green-winged teal, which is a very unusual species for the winter time. Uh, of course, lots of mallards, people see those a lot. Um, but then, where we really uh, had a bonus were our diving ducks, the big water ducks, the ducks that you normally see on bigger lakes or even the ocean. Uh, redhead, canvasback, the two species of scalp, uh, two species of scoters, the surf and the black scoter, bufflehead, common golden eye, all three species of mergansers, although their numbers were lower because the lake at the time when the count was done was wide open. There was no ice on the lake. Uh, we had ruddy duck, but we also had, oh, I love this one, a male harlequin duck was seen that day. And uh, if you've never seen a harlequin duck, they're usually a, a western species out on the Pacific. So this is a species that was found here on that day. That was awesome. Um, wild turkey were seen not on the lake, obviously, uh, but no normally we, we sometimes miss them. Uh, so it was nice to have wild turkey on our list. Um, cormorants and great blue heron. Hey, how about another surprise? Turkey vulture. Uh, I didn't think they were hung around too much in the winter, but they're beginning to, to be seen more and more and more commonly in the winter, 12 months out of the year, and uh, here in the northern Ohio area. I'm not sure what that means, but maybe when we start looking at the data, uh, perhaps our climate is warming up enough for them to hang around uh, even in the winter time. Uh, 14 bald eagles were sighted. I mean, just think 20, 25 years ago, a bald eagle was like, whoa, so that, that's pretty awesome. Our, our hawk uh, list, sharp shinned and Cooper's hawks, Lots of red tails, red shouldered, and uh, one rough legged hawk was sighted at the um, inter uh, Hopkins International Airport. All that open land there uh, provides habitat for them. Uh, another surprise a sandhill crane flew over the city of Berea. Again, who knew? You just never know what's going to show up. Uh, just like behind me, maybe on the lake, gulls, gulls galore. Well, now that the lake is frozen, the gulls are beginning to concentrate in open areas. But with the lake open for the Christmas count, our gull numbers were down and our species diversity was down. But we still had herring and ring-billed gull, great black back, lesser black back, 
one Bonaparte's goal was seen, which was nice. Uh, so, so again, a little bit less diversity, but again, nice diversity. Uh, owls, we had great horned and barred owl, and uh, one person had a northern saw wet owl in their backyard. Surprise! I don't know of how many of those have ever been seen on our Christmas counts. We hit all species of woodpeckers. Red-headed woodpecker numbers were, were pretty darn good, uh, as were uh, red bellies and downies and hairies and flickers uh, as pileated and pileated too. Uh, but we also had a, a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Surprise! Again, another bird that we don't tend to get on our, on our count. Uh, why the increase and why did we get all the, the woodpeckers? Well, if you think about our forests and how many uh, trees have succumbed to things like the uh, uh, emerald ash borer. So a lot of dead trees, a lot of dead standing trees, a lot of potential food for the woodpeckers and now the, with the dead trees some nesting uh, availability. So are we going to be seeing woodpecker numbers increase and then once those trees fall over uh, or are no longer around, will they decrease? Again, keep your eyes open on these on this data. Um, with falcons, uh, we had all three species, um, American kestrel, merlin, and peregrine falcon. And again, years ago, who would have expected peregrine falcons uh, in the city? But they're here. Then we get into our birds that we tend to see around the um, around neighborhoods and at feeders and so forth. Things like jays and chickadees. All these numbers doing very very well. Uh, wrens. We had a winter wren on count week. Winter wren, no bigger than a mouse. Really hard to see. So uh, it was a nice find during count week. Um, golden crown kinglets. Again, something we don't normally get on our our counts. They were sighted. Uh, a robins, American robins. More and more robins are being seen during uh, Christmas counts. And is this, again, due to our warming climate, or are we having more fruiting trees in places like neighborhoods, cemeteries, uh, green spaces? Again, this is something to, to correlate. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, oh, two species of warblers. Who would have guessed? In the winter, uh, yellow rumped warbler or myrtle warbler, uh, that's kind of expected maybe this time of year. Two were sighted, but here's a surprise, a common yellow throat, uh, which, is a, which was sighted at the Abrams Wetland, which is one of the n newer parks that the Metro Parks has, part of the Lake to Lake Trail. So wetlands are, again, vitally important for species, not only during ne uh, nesting and breeding season, but wintering. So this provided that habitat for that common yellow throat. Very unexpected. Our sparrows, nice uh, supply of sparrows, American tree sparrow, song sparrow, swamp, and white-throated, as well as dark-eyed junco. During count week, we had fox sparrow sighted as well, too. Cardinal, blackbirds, finches, and this was not a year for the winter finches to arrive in this part of Ohio, and yet uh, some purple finch as well as a pine siskin were sighted. So again, 80 species, four during count week, wonderful uh, participation by 57 participants in the Christmas bird count. It's been wonderful. If you'd like to look at the information with numbers of species, uh, you can check out the Western Cuyahoga website, uh, wcaudubon.org, and search that website. We've got lots and lots of information about not only the Christmas count, but other opportunities for citizen science. The Great Backyard Bird Count will be coming up in mid-February. Again, a snapshot of time where people can uh, Come get some data and uh, turn that data in so we can see what was around during a particular time of the year. So don't always look for birds in the spring and summer. Any time of the year in Northeast Ohio is great. Thanks.